control room, uh, which my character, Goldman, puts together. Here's my desk. Give me 182B. The control room, which is basically the producer villain's television studio. Eddie, talk to me. Where 400 cameras on the island are bringing in images of the violence on the island. You've got monitors all showing the convicts up at any given time. Eddie? Uh, now that second one. Take us live to the web. When we broke the script down, it became apparent that The Condemned wasn't a major visual effects movie. As you read through it, there were a few pieces where you just thought, ooh, a few people have got to explode. There's a few dangerous moments with arrows. <laughs> Apart from that, the main visual effects piece in The Condemned is the control room, which is an amazing visual effects piece on its own. It's this fully operational control room with 44 active screens, all showing footage that apparently we're witnessing on the island as the game is taking place. It's kind of just put together hanging by wires and like, you know, basically hanging by a thread. That was the way they originally had intended it, just to be thrown together at the last minute and just in time to film the convict's arrival. Who the hell is this guy? We decided to use Genesis in the control room, which is uh, basically, you're shooting on video, but it's the most expensive video camera in the world, so that the condemned would have this really raw look in the jungle and during the violence. But when we come into the control room, it has a different look to it. We've got several actors in that control room, and you want the actors to give a performance to what's on the screen. And we had to shoot all of the fight action prior to going into the producer's control room on the island so that we had that material to play back. I want him. So then when we were done with an action scene, we'd have to film it again in video. Video cameras, video cameras. Keep struggling, keep struggling. And not in a very stylized 35 millimeter way, but in a Rodney King way, which is it was just captured by a surveillance camera. We have this surveillance camera up here. Tonight, we're also replicating the surveillance camera that is inside the B-25. How's that feel? I think they're gonna get it on. We had to get the same energy and performance that Scott was getting for his main film. So we decided to shoot simultaneously. We assembled a kit of cameras and we went with first unit and second unit and shot DV video. There's a real delineation with the way that we use yep. the film cameras and the video cameras. When we filmed an action scene in 35 millimeter, we filmed it like an action movie. Close-ups, you know, tight stuff. The film cameras are completely involved in the story. They're close to the actors, they move when the actors move, they react when the actors get hit. <laughs> There's a specific language we use with the video cameras, and they're very voyeuristic. The angles that we've chosen, the type of lenses that we use, where we put them. For example, up high in a tree with some leaves in front of the camera, or from behind a tree, so you can see the violence happening, but it's on video, and you're kind of hoping to get a better angle. But what makes it creepy is that it's not a better angle. We can pretty much put any image we want on any video screen here. That large room is fed by that small room. But this is the real control nerve center. So we pre-select the material here, show the material to Scott. He gets a feeling of what he's going to see, and then we play it through to the control room. I think when people see the film, they'll buy into the fact that the guys are physically in the tent and watching the footage simultaneously. So it's not a blue screen. It's not stuff that we've gone into post-production and added to the scene. With the control room, there are like six main characters and then there's a ring of peripheral characters around us. So there's probably 12 to 14 people in that room. To get everybody to react to the same thing at the one time is pretty difficult when you've got a green screen. Oh, no. Some of the characters in the control room look up at the violence oh, no. and they realize this is real. Oh, no. Well, did you think this guy had more dignity waiting in the electric chair in Guatemala City? Yeah. Oh. I do. You are great. Others have been so brainwashed by video games and violent movies and violent images on TV that they just see it as entertainment. This is hard fucking core, man. Well, the first time I saw the fight scenes, I was uh, kind of watching the screen in horror, which worked out really well because my character basically does that for, you know, 80% of the movie. Stop this. 
What? Stop this! Baby, come on. She's a killer and a whore. She's a human being. It's really a film about alternate realities. The reality of Stone Cold and the other characters who are playing the game, fighting for their lives. And the reality of people watching it on a two-dimensional screen, whether it's in the control room or whether they're watching it on a computer screen in America or Europe or wherever. It's really two versions of the same reality. One is incredibly brutal and smelly and hard and bloody and dirty. And the other one, you feel like you could be watching a staged performance or something which is not quite real. And that's the real crux of the story.